Did you know that sometimes in comic books, when superheroes want to disguise themselves as their secret identities, they just put on a pair of eyeglasses and nobody recognizes them? That's ridiculous! Well, let's try it. Well, what do you think? I'm sorry, who are you? Who is that? Hi, and welcome to another virtual story time. My name is Mr. Eric, it's great to have you here. Today we're gonna to be talking about comic books. I don't know if you're a fan of comic books, if you've heard of this thing they call comic books. Sometimes people call them graphic novels, uh, but basically, um, sometimes people call them, you know, uh, sort of sequential stories. Uh, it, it's anything where you have a series of kind of pictures on one page and you read through the pictures and you get a story out of it. And there's lots of really cool stuff, uh, there are, um, you know, comic strips in the newspaper. Ask your parents what that is, uh, so you can uh, read those. There are also books at the library where, that tell actually very sort of uh, interesting and sometimes really serious stories um, in comics. You can do uh, just about anything with comics that you can do with almost any other medium, like a chapter book or anything else. So, what I'm trying to say is comics are pretty cool, and we're gonna talk about comics today. There are a lot of comics, people often associate comics with superheroes. And our story that we're gonna to tell today is about a superhero. Actually, it's not, that's a total lie. It's not about a superhero, it's about the superhero's helpers. It's about the superhero's helpers who are sound effects. You probably know about sound effects, you've probably seen some sound effects, you know, like, like pow, and slam, wham, snicked, thwip, bamf, baroom, kaboom. You know, sound effects. It's really difficult if you're a superhero in a comic book to do your job without the help of sound effects. I mean, sometimes you have to. Sometimes the sound effect has uh, family obligations, a dental appointment, something like that, and the uh, superhero has to go do their job without sound effects. But just picture it. You're a superhero. You're about to go and, like, punch a bad guy. Because in superhero comics, there's a fair amount of punching. I don't know if you've noticed that. In real life, we don't like punching. Punching's not great. Uh, in comics, sometimes we get some punching. That's uh, just something you do. So uh, the superhero's about to punch the bad guy, and then instead of pow, you get... I mean, what is that? You know? The, the bad guy doesn't even know they're supposed to fall down. Half the time, the bad guy runs away or, or just wanders off uh, and gets distracted. And, and really, the whole experience of the violent fight is just ruined for everybody at that point. Or it could even be worse, though, if a sound effect substitutes in for another sound effect uh, that can't be there that day. You know, so like the superhero's coming down, is going to stop a runaway train that's barreling down the track. And the, the superhero goes up and smashes in to the, tra the train, and instead of a bang, or a clang, you get You know, Aooga! It's weird, you know. And at that point, I mean, it's just hard to enjoy being rescued after something like that happens. So I guess what we've established here is basically the sound effects are important. And sound effects enjoy their job. Most sound effects enjoy their job. For instance, uh, let's take a look at BAM. BAM! Bam is a very busy sound effect. Bam gets lots of work. Anytime there is a, a meteor uh, to stop or um, a, a car that needs to be thrown across the street for some reason. You know, even when a superhero slams a door or puts a pan down on a stove a little too hard. Bam, bam, there's just lots of work for bam. Bam gets in there every day. Bam's working all the time. Bam loves to work. It's a good situation for bam. And then there's Bam's friend, Thok. Thok doesn't work as much as BAM, but anytime there's one of those fights that we were talking about earlier with the punching that we don't like in real life but we like in comics for some reason, anytime uh, uh, two uh, heroes or two figures start throwing punches at each other, Thok is in the mix. Thok comes out, Thok can go for a week without working at all, but as soon as people start fighting, it's just all Thok all the time. Thok, 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 Thok. Thok is busy, Thok likes it that way. And then there is Squish. Not like not a lot, you know, going on with Squish. Squish feels a little neglected. 
There was the day that the hero got caught in the rain, had to walk home with wet socks. That was a big day for Squish. Squish got a lot of work that day, but other than that, the rain and the socks, I mean, just not a lot happening. And Squish notices, and Squish feels bad about it. And the other sound effects are great. They're very, very nice. You know, Bam sits down with Squish and says, every sound effect is important. We all matter, we're all useful, you know. And Thok sits down with Squish and says, there are no small sounds. There are just low amplitude acoustic waves. But Squish knows, in their heart. Squish just has a sense that somehow Squish isn't the same as these other sounds. I mean, they've got exclamation points. You know, they've got actual punctuation. Squish doesn't even have a comma. Uh, Squish just can tell that somehow the situation isn't the same for Squish. And that's why one day at Sound Effects headquarters in Puget Sound, Squish is packing their bags. Everyone else is running around doing sound effects things, and Squish is planning to move away forever without telling anybody. They won't even notice that I'm gone, thinks Squish. Nobody will even miss me. And so, so as Squish is packing their washcloths and slime balls and water balloons, all of a sudden, the hero emergency alarm sounds. Mah, 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 said the hero alarm sound effect. Now that's a steady job. Mah, mah, mah. Everyone looks up. Something's happening. Something bad is happening. Heroes are needed. Sounds are needed. Squish just shrugged and zipped up their bag. Doesn't have anything to do with me. Bam came running into the room. We're under attack. We're under attack from space aliens from outer space. Under attack. Squish picked up their damp little bag and said, you guys can handle it. Thok came running into the room. OK, guys, the, all sounds on deck. This is a, a, a code kaboom situation. Squish headed for the exit. Good luck, guys. Bam was like, spaceships coming means lots of loud noises. Oh, I'm glad I didn't make dinner, t dinner plans for tonight. Bam! Thok was like, I sense some fighting coming on. I better stretch. No one noticed that the exit door had quietly clicked shut. Squish was gone. Squish had left. At that moment, a voice came over the radio system. Attention, please. Attention, please. We have identified the alien attacker. We are under attack by an evil space sponge from the planet Soggy. Repeat, we are under attack by an evil space sponge from the planet Soggy. Everyone looked up. What's that now? Again, we are under attack by an evil space sponge from the planet Soggy. The danger is real. The danger is now. The danger is wet and very, very soft. The exit door swung open. Said the door sound effect. Squish was still there. Squish hadn't left yet. And they said, what did they just say again? Oh my gosh, I wish you would listen to me, said the voice. I said we are under attack. We got it, we got it, we got it. All the other sound effects turned and faced Squish. Bam said, you're on deck, Squish. Thok said, it's your day, Squish. And Squish said, it's squishing time. And when the hero threw that first kick at the evil space sponge's head, let's say head, Squish was right there. And Squish had brought a whole bunch of exclamation points. Squish! So there I was, yeah? Stuck in the road, yeah? With a runaway waffle cart barreling right toward me. Oh no! I couldn't get away. I was a goner. What happened? What happened? That's when Captain Catastrophe flew down and said, I'm here to save you. Oh, good. So that's how you got away. Nope. I refused to let him save me. Why? You haven't heard about Captain Catastrophe? No, what about 
Captain Catastrophe. On weekends, when he's off duty, when he's not busy saving people and stopping crime, he flies around to kids' birthday parties. Oh, that's nice. And he eats half the birthday cake. Oh, that's a lot. Half is a lot. And then he stomps on the rest of the cake so no one else can eat it. Then he flies away again and he doesn't even say happy birthday. That's terrible. I know. Why does he do that? Because he's a bad person. But I mean, why stomp the cake? He's not good. At the same time, I, you didn't need to be rescued from the waffle cart. Not by him, I didn't. So you just told him to move along. Really? No, no, not exactly. Aha! I said, move along, please. Wow! How could I feel good about myself if I got rescued by someone like that? How could you feel good about yourself if you're under a runaway waffle cart? The good news is, another superhero showed up not long after that. Oh, good! Who? Commander Stripey Socks. So Commander Stripey Socks rescued you? He did. Isn't Commander Stripey Socks the one who steals candy from babies? Yes. But the waffle cart was, was getting really close. Oh, I see. So, I mean, I figured... Yeah, say no more. That's fine. I mean, babies shouldn't really be eating candy anyway. Hey, I'm on your side! I don't know how much uh, time you spent reading comics, but there are certain elements that you almost always find in comics. Like, for instance, word balloons. If two people in a comic are talking to each other, uh, the things they're saying are probably in these big word balloons over their head, so you can tell what they're saying. Um, there are other elements of a comic, though, that it's useful to know. For instance, when you are looking at the pictures in a comic, they're usually in these different squares or rectangles that people call panels. That's a panel, that's a panel. And there is this space between the panels called the gutter. And there's this guy named Scott McCloud who talks about this. The gutter, you would think, it's not that interesting. It's just empty space, nothing happening there. But the gutter is kind of where everything happens in a comic. That's where kind of time passes, because you know, in this panel, you're in one period of time. In this panel, you're in another period of time. Anything that happens between those two panels happens mysteriously in the gutter. So we're gonna try to explore that right now. So, uh, Kelsey, give me an animal. A monkey. A monkey. So, here we have a monkey. You'll notice that uh, Kelsey could not be bothered to say something easy to draw, like a snake. That's cool, Kelsey. We'll do a monkey. We've got all the time in the world, no big deal. So, in this panel, there's a monkey looking kind of chill. In this next panel, we still have the monkey. How much time has passed? between the first panel and the second panel, do you think? A second? Five minutes? Or maybe it's been a very long time. So long that the monkey has grown a long beard and gone to an ophthalmologist to get corrective lenses. So, in this space of this panel, many, many years have gone by, and you can tell by comparing the monkeys. We could have a different story in another set of panels. Kelsey, give me an animal. An elephant. An elephant. <laughs> See, I actually thought because I planted snake in her head, she might say snake, but no, we're gonna do an elephant, so that's cool. All right, so here we have an elephant. Just so you can tell we didn't plan this out ahead of time. So you'd be saying very easy to draw animals. Although I have to say, at least she didn't say zebra or tiger. Because you don't know boring until you've seen me draw every stripe on a zebra or a tiger. This thing would be like 35 minutes long. This would be like the Zack Snyder cut of story times. So.
Here we have an elephant looking at a tasty apple. I don't know if elephants eat apples. That is not the subject of this story time. I'm not required to be factual on the subject of elephants and their diets in the wild. What happened to the apple? What happened to the apple, Kelsey? Got eaten. Got eaten by the elephant. That's what happened in this gutter. And if you actually had to watch, you know, 32 panels of the elephant deciding to eat the apple, taking the first bite of the apple, taking the second bite of the apple, that would be sort of a very boring comic. That would be like an Andy Warhol comic. But instead, we jump right over the gutter to the moment where the elephant has eaten the apple realizes that perhaps the elephant has eaten too much and now is regretting the apple. And that, my friends, is comedy. This has been comics uh, and their terms and random animals. Uh, we don't have a name for this part. Just, let's just go on to the next thing. Wanna trade comic books? Okay! I'll trade you one issue of Sticky Man for two Captain Milkshakes. I'll trade you two Captain Milkshakes for three Lauren the Destroyers. I'll trade you three Lauren the Destroyers for five Toilet Man Special Issues. I'll trade you five Toilet Man Special Issues for 10 Onion Avengers. I'll give you 10 Onion Avengers for 20 Kristen the Crumplers. I'll give you 20 Kristen the Crumplers for 50 Jump Rope Jills. I'll give you 50 Jump Rope Jills for 500 Incredible Shrugs. I'll give you 500 Incredible Shrugs for a thousand Belly Button of Dooms. I'll give you a thousand Belly Buttons of Doom for 5,000 Starfish of Mortality Super Specials. I'll give you 5,000 Starfish of Mortality Super Specials for one million Commander Can Openers. Deal. 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 All right. Okay. Do you actually have any comic books at all? No. Me either. Thank you very much for joining us for this virtual story time. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Uh, join us next week when another librarian will be here doing the story time thing. And um, I hope you'll join us for that. Uh, this has been fun talking about comics. Uh, we've now reached the point in the story time that's kind of like the part of the comic where you get to the end and it says the end and then you turn the page and there are weird advertisements for weird things. Uh, we're now into the weird advertisement portion, uh, but because this is uh, not an advertiser supported service, uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's just gonna fade to black and recommend some other weird videos to you, which I guess is kind of like an advertisement. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mr. Eric and I will see you again at my next virtual story time. Thanks guys.